Hello there, hello there. Thank you for joining me. This is Tammy from Texas Desert Rose, and I can't even tell you how long this show has been in the making. Um, today our topic is going to be on imposter syndrome, and guess what? This is me embracing my imposter syndrome. Don't worry if you don't know what that is. We're certainly going to talk about it, and I'm sure you felt it, maybe feeling it now. Um, so first, let me tell you that I'm a licensed therapist, uh, licensed out of Texas. Hello, Denton, just north of Dallas and Fort Worth. Woohoo! And uh, you may hear some sounds in the background every once in a while because I am in Korea working for the military. And, you know, as you can probably imagine, there's a few, a little bit of action going on. A little bit of black, some Blackhawks, some, you know, um, I don't know, air um, ground stuff going on. Um, so it can get a little bit loud, but, uh, let's talk about how I got here. Um, okay. So imposter syndrome is this term, a diagnosis, if you will, but who cares? It's what we feel. Everybody feels it sometimes. Um, and that is when this over kind of sometimes overwhelming, uh, feeling that at any moment, Somebody's going to walk in and realize that you don't know what you're doing. You don't belong here. And the secret to that is that it's simply in your head, but it can convince you that it's real. Let me tell you a little bit about what it's taken for me to get here. I've had a podcast on Spotify, uh, iTunes, iHeart, um, Facebook for quite some time. Okay. And uh, about a year, I guess. And I would record and, uh, you know, I would interview people. It's my favorite thing in the world to do. And uh, it took me a while to get there. But somehow doing a YouTube with my face, my whole real soul here was so and is so overwhelming. And so, you know what? As often God and Spirit does, um, pretty quickly... Uh, I've gotten a lot of messages that this is what I'm supposed to do. Who cares what I look like? Who cares what I have to say? There's going to be somebody, if only one, that this is going to impact. So I'm going to get real and honest with you guys and tell you about my story today. Okay? And please consider like, sharing, subscribing, commenting, whatever it takes. Um, and also, Texas Desert Rose on Facebook page has all the other aud auditory uh, audios on there. So please consider, um, imposter syndrome, a little bit of my background. I came from Denton, Texas, like I said, lived in when we were lucky in the trailer park over the tracks. And as an adult, we can talk, tell each other all day long, uh, that doesn't make a difference what you have, what you don't have. But whenever you're a child growing into an adolescent, it has an overarching, overwhelming, message that you have nothing to offer. You don't belong. You, who do you think you are? My grades in elementary were amazing. Um, middle school, meh, hard time, very hard time for reasons I'll go into and, and maybe other, other, um, recordings. Um, high school, meh, not, not that great. I was probably a BC student. I studied hard, but there was just too many other things going on. Um, a friend of mine uh, wanted to convince me to graduate early and, and of course, you know, I, you know what, that does sound good, but there was this nagging voice or feeling in the background that said, you are supposed to go to college. There's more out there for you. Don't just give up now. Right. Not that those that didn't go to college are giving up, but for me, the message was there's more and you're supposed to do more. So I went and sat for, I did go ahead and graduate in January and, uh, I went and sat for the SATs and y'all, I've never told anybody this. So I'm getting real and honest. My scores were 780 and I'm not one of those that had mom, dad, whoever in the background going, go retest, retest, retest. And I don't know that I would have anyway. I'm a one and done person. That's just who I am. And so I thought, you know what, those are, I don't know if those are good or not. I don't even know what I was supposed to make. Like I was flying blind. 
and which is often how I do it. And so I went in and applied. I applied to UNT, even though there was community college option. I didn't think about that and wish I had of later. I would have saved a lot of money, but and probably grades would have been a lot better. But I went in and applied. And I got in on probate. First, I got two letters. It's so weird. That happens to me a lot. First letter said, no, are you kidding me? No way. Sorry. And the second one was, oh, okay, we're going to let you in on probationary status. And I was thrilled. Now, keep in mind, I had no money. There was no savings. I didn't know about any kind of financial aid. I didn't know about any of that. But I went ahead and I went to orientation with some really good friends. Did a week of orientation. Everything was fun uh, until the last day was registration. And for what I was told, if you want to get insurance, I didn't know who I was getting insurance from, but if you want to get insurance, you better do at least full time, which was for undergraduate 12 hours. So I figured out how I would do the schedule of doing very early morning classes, going straight to work and working the rest of the day at the bank job I had, making very little. And then the bill comes. That was my first imposter syndrome. Well, that wasn't my first, but that was a very defining moment. I did not belong. I didn't feel like I belonged in orientation, in college, any of it. I got the bill and it said, you are going to laugh at this, but it, it probably said like $800 for a semester, which was nothing uh, today, but in 1985. And when you have nothing, it was a lot. And I just cried. And I said, oh my God, what am I going to do? Who do I think I am? You know those thoughts. Anybody recognizing this? When those messages in your head say, who do I think I am? I don't belong here. How am I going to make this? I need to crawl back in my hole. I need to go back to my job making at the time, maybe minimum wage, and just behave. Be still. Go sit still. Go to your place. So anybody out there rec uh, relating to this? It was truly one of the scariest moments of my life. I was devastated. But I said, you know what? Somebody told me about financial aid. I went and talked to them. I applied for Pell Grant. Of course, I'm going to qualify if I can find any of the tax information, you know, uh, from my parents or whatever. And so I went ahead and went to school and I said, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm just going to keep my head down. The most, the biggest moments of my life, and I'm, that's what I'm going to recommend to you, is put your head down. Put your head down by your hands, as I was told one time, and just go ahead. Be Superman. Shoot ahead. And those acts of faith are what they call one step in front of the other. Even when it needs to be one toe moved, not even a whole step. The energy that it involves to move and take that one step will set the course in motion. Well, guess what happened? I barely survived on my grades, uh, studied as much as I could, but I was way, working 30, 35 hours a week. But all of my life was about studying. I gave myself permission on one day a week to just relax. But the other times were either working or studying, a lot of times studying at work. And about a year later, September 18th to be exact, my father died. Um, sad situation. Uh, he died of cirrhosis. Um, he was a vet. And what I didn't know, and this was the answer that later came because I had faith to first to keep in college. What happened was he got the posthumous, um, hundred percent disability, which what that at the time, what came with that, it was called chapter 35. For those of you who've heard of it, it's where your dependents are able to go to college and have it paid for um, until the age of 23. Now, I have two brothers, and that wasn't the right answer for them at the time, so they didn't. But what that did was help me to, and it wasn't a whole lot of money. I think it was $310 a month, but that's all I needed to be able to pay the rest of my undergraduate and pursue which begat me going to grad school. And uh, <clears throat> my undergraduate was in business, got out there in the business world, quickly decided that that wasn't for me. And I went back to school. 
and got my graduate uh, degree in counseling education. I wanted to make a difference with people, which led to a license, which led to, um, you know, uh, just little by little working for a community college as an advisor, love that job, love those people, but I quickly outgrew it uh, because I was supposed to be something bigger. Again, the next stage, imposter syndrome. I kept fe feeling pulled to open a counseling practice. Who am I, right? The demons are in the head. Who are you? You're gonna fail, you're gonna go broke. And here comes the next step. Uh, somebody who actually was kind of my nemesis, really difficult person that I worked for, came up and said, I'm going to regret this, but give these people a call. They're looking for somebody who can work maybe a month overseas uh, for our military. What? I immediately called. And as often as the case, when it's supposed to be for you, instant hire. And the next thing I know, in a couple of months, I'm flying to Germany. This poor, gore, poor, ugh, poor girl from Denton, Texas is flying to Germany to work as a therapist with a degree that she never thought she was going to get to begin with and to try to make a difference. Well, what that did was, besides going overseas and changing my life, part of the reason why I'm in Korea now, is it allowed me to take this little nest egg and as often the case, the situation I was, the office I was working for was absolutely a no-go. And I've decided, that's happened so many times, that the no-goes are designed to get me to take that step. If I get miserable enough, I will take that step. And guess what? I was. I flew back from Germany, had my little nest egg, which for me, it wasn't that much money, but it was enough to hang a shingle out for tarot counseling. And other people stepped into my life. Bless you people. They're still in my life. They're amazing people who help me keep the practice going, who help me to make a difference with people's lives. They have amazing hearts. I would have given up if it wasn't for that thing coming, coming in to, in, to help me out. So fast forward, we've got tarot counseling, which is still open uh, and practicing. Uh, amazing, like I said, amazing, devoted, dedicated people. If you have any need for a counselor and you live in Texas, let me know because we do Zoom calls. Uh, and I've got content connections with other counselors basically all over the U.S. And so if you have a need, message me and let me know and we can get you taken care of, okay? Um, what kind of demons do you have in your head? What are you putting off? What are you so afraid to do? Guys, I relate. I relate. I still don't know what I'm supposed to contribute. Look at the actors that still get very nervous before they go on stage or the performers who are mega stars who still get anxious and nervous because of those demons. But the thing is, don't let them define your behavior. Kick them. Kick them. You know? Or act as if. Fake it till you feel it. That's my, that's going to be on my epitaph, you know, fake it till you feel it. The worst thing that happens is I screw this whole thing up. So what? I won't feel any worse than what I was feeling putting it off. And so, yeah, uh, imposter syndrome, Gets being put in front of a classroom and having to, having researched a company and defend and explain what made them go belly up. You know, and the class's grade depends on arguing with you and getting you. I mean, oh my gosh, I think I threw up three times before I even went into that class that day. But and my graduation was depending on it. These are very scary things. You know, uh, getting on the stage to sing for the first time. You know, I was told I was supposed to sing. It was, it's a burning, you know, whatever you've ever kind of fantasized and dreamed about. It's probably something you need to try. That for me was what it was. Two things singing in front of a huge audience and now I sing in a band uh very scary very scary and there's been some heckling there's been some deplorable situations that were very very difficult but I got right back up on the stage or on the horse you know uh when I was a child I used to fantasize sitting in the bathtub of doing advertising you know have this product and I would be I've always wanted to be on the radio 
Well, when I worked in Bahrain, I had a radio show. It is absolutely my dream. I love it. This and that are my favorite things in the world and singing. So ultimately, when it's all said and done, I want to say I did it all. I tried it all. Even if I fall off, it's better than not doing it. There are many out there that are going to hear this because I believe it's going to get to your eyes and your ears when you're supposed to have it who are relating to this, okay? Feel the fear, do it anyway, okay? Um, since then, how did I get here? Um, after Germany, I got opportunities to fly on the weekends. I would see clients all week long. And on the weekends, I would go work National Guard, Reserve, all of that, and got to fly all over the U.S. It was amazing. Uh, exhausting, because I was working seven days a week, and travel will wear you down. I think in one year, I, I flew 139 times in one year. No, that's not possible. 39 times. 39 times. Just about every weekend, I was exhausted. Um, just anything to keep the dream going and to make a difference. And I have a heart for military. My dad was a veteran. Um, uh, go Navy. He was based in uh, Okinawa. And I got a chance to go there. So I've been to Germany, Okinawa, uh, Middle East for the last five. About to go back. Love Bahrain. Love my people in Bahrain. Singing a band there. Love the, the families there. Um, it's an amazing experience. Uh, if you ever get a chance, try it. Ugh, it's not what we think it is. Uh, I've done, it'll be a year here in Korea, South Korea, here at uh, Camp Humphreys. Uh, working with our kids, middle schoolers here. So I've worked with adults, middle schoolers, elementary, child development, made friends all over the world, uh, Italy, met amazing people who still are in my life. Uh, overseas workers, they just tend to stay in contact a lot of times. We're kind of each other's family, you know. Um, and you're probably sitting there thinking, what does this have to do with me? I'll never have any of that. Do you really think I ever thought I would? Do you really think I ever thought I would? And even today on down days, I can get those demons start talking. You know, who do you think you are? Uh, how dare you try to be more than what you were meant to be? You need to go back home. You know, there's nothing wrong with choosing to be at home. But I know in my soul, and I've gotten a lot of messages, that I'm meant to to go experience my life, which is, you know, like anybody's has been <laughs> whew, stressful, difficult. I've been cheated. I've been lied on. I've lost thousands of dollars uh, because you know what? I had what they call the naivete defense. Uh, defense is to help keep you safe. Some people are very cautious and on guard in order to keep themselves safe. Well, because of the way I grew up and some of the personalities that I dealt with and some of the injuries and some of the hurt, uh, I became what's called naive, naivete. I wanted, I needed to believe that no one would ever hurt me because I'm a good person. Well, believing no one will hurt you because you're a good person is like believing that the lion's not going to eat you because you're vegetarian. You can give it up. It's not going to work. So as a result, I've gotten hurt many times. But it grew my skin. I'm not a cautious, unbelieving in human beings, but I am discerning. That was developed in me. It served a purpose. And not because I worked in the Middle East, y'all. Not because I worked overseas. U.S. U.S. Humans are everywhere. They don't all have bad intentions, but they don't always do well for you. So you have to be discerning. Um, that naivety did not work for me. You know how when you first get that first job, at 15 I got a job at a retirement home, and I remember my feet hurt so bad after work. And eventually the callus was developing on my feet that would stay there for the rest of my life because that's what was needed for me to survive. That's the same thing with your skin as you walk and people that are put in your lives to not only bless you with the goodness, but the ones are put in your life to bless you with the challenge and to thicken that skin. Okay? Because they're both needed. You need to believe in people, but not so much that it hurts you. I threw myself under the bus way too many times because I didn't want to see 
I didn't want to see that they had ill intention and that they were taking care of them. They were going to take that money. You know, I had to learn. Oh boy, did I have to learn. Um, yeah. So I'm looking over here cause I've got a few notes. I want to make sure I cover everything. Um, so shout out to those who have been in my corner, vote before and against me. The biggest changes in my life have been because somebody made it difficult. Someone made it difficult, but there were also there's those there who were there to support me and to catch me when I fell. I love you. I love you. Thank you for what you've done for me. So the ones who tested me, cheated me, criticized me, it only made me stronger. Except for days it didn't. And the days it didn't proved my resolve to break out of that and still go do what I was meant to do. Now, what if you don't know what you're meant to do? Well, just be still. The answers will come. You probably, I, all of us know deep down, deep down, maybe you're not aware of it yet, what you're supposed to do. Whether that be uh, raising amazing children, um, keeping the home safe, um, would that be business, accounting? It doesn't have to be major, major, but we all make a difference in some way. We all do. Um, what did you dream about and fantasize about, like me in the bathtub? What did you fantasize about whenever you were maybe eight or nine years old or younger? You know, um, that might be a very, very good clue to what you're meant to do. Um, if you have any questions about that and you want to talk that out, message me. You know, we can flush that out. That's part of what I do. Um, so I do know this, that your soul knows and your soul is waiting. You've got something to contribute to the world. If we all just not even took a step, just move your toe. Because what that does, like I said before, it sets the energy in motion. It moves you forward. That's what this recording is for. This is me putting my toe forward. And if no one ever sees it, the energy is still put in place because this is what I want to do. I want to go learn and through, again, good and bad, I want to become more wise and I want to share that with you for anybody who needs it. And so you now you've heard Tammy, Texas Desert Rose, talking about imposter syndrome. I hope that in some way, it's blessed you. Please tell me your comments. I'd love to hear back. Regardless, I want to learn from you too. So this is not my foot, but my toe, which needs a pedicure um, being moved forward. I'll see you next week. Peace.